Welcome to today's lecture. We'll be discussing on the solution to transportation problems in developing countries. Identifying and solving transportation problem is one of the chief tasks confronting government in developing countries. The continuity expansion of the cities make the daily movement of people and goods an ever increasing complex problem. Urban growth costs sees multiple transportation demands on inadequate facilities. Urban growth causes multiple transportation demand on inadequate facilities. And in order to address the increasing urbanization and vetting problem of congestion, both short and long-term strategies need to be employed. Care and professional competence in planning an operation of highways, airports, railways, waterways, public transit, and good terminals is an increased demand of society. However, below are solutions to transportation problems in developing countries. Public transport system. Public Transport can be introduced to become an attractive alternative to car. This strategy is to extend the mass transport system to areas of intense development. The mass rapid transit MRT system serving the main corridor can be supplemented by the light rapid transit in less dense area. A network of expressway and semi-expressway can be employed or developed along the tunnel connection within the city areas and bridge connection to the offshore islands. Land use integration. This is to encourage high density development at around major transport nodes such as mass rapid transit stations and bus interchange. Such integration will provide multiple benefits, not only to the commuter, but also to the developers and public transport provider. Firstly, the commuter can only, we only, en we enjoy slimness travels from origin to destination and work less in greater comfort and convenience. These techniques will make communal to enjoy slimness travel from origin to destination and work less in greater comfort and convenience. Secondly, such integrated developments are expected to benefit from higher property value and increase consumer traffic. Thirdly, a good mix of residential, industrial, and commercial development will also benefit the public transport provider because it will result in a more uniform traffic demand and hence a more economically sustainable system. Such direct integration of developed needs proper, proper plan. Direct integration of development needs proper plan. Travel demand management. The high demand for private transport in developing countries is in past due to its unmatched attractiveness over public transport in terms of convenience, mobility, flexibility, and enjoyment of privacy in travels. Furthermore, with economic growth and ri rising affluence, owning a car has become an aspiration of most people who view the car not just as a mode of transportation, but also an important symbol of social status. Despite every investment in road expansion pro programs, 
it is impossible for road development to keep pace with the growth in vehicle population. This challenge has always been to seek innovative ways to restrain vehicle growth and usage so as to keep vehicle population with a manageable level to contain the congestion problem. Ownership nonsense. Ownership nonsense. Introducing quantity restraint on vehicle ownership in terms of a quota system will be necessary effectually to cope with the problem of a rising vehicle population. Under a quota system, the government can directly control vehicle population by prescribing a maximum number of vehicles to be added taking into account vehicle to be scrapped and ends taken out of circulation. By allowing the rights of car ownership to be determined by market force, the government will be free from the heavy administrative burden of having to make constant adjustment of taxes. Another solution could be usage restraint. Usage restraint. Usage restraints are needed to keep the road free from congestion. This technique is needed to keep the road free from congestion. It is recognized that traffic congestion arises because the car user take into account only its private cost and not the public cost of operating the vehicle. That is common to most of us. We don't consider the public effect of our actions, but we just check our own comfortability. Introducing this, we recoup part of that. Road pricing can be considered as a direct economic instrument that controls road usage. By internalizing this social cost, it will reflect the margin, marginal congestion cost of road usage and lead to an optimal amount of congestion. That is what it costs to society. Manual approach. Initiating staggered working hour and car pooling should be introduced to reduce peak traffic demand and to discourage the use of private transport into the city. If it will work out because there's no limit to align flexible working hours in many businesses and work. Moreover, staggered work hours actually discourage car pooling as the opportunity for formal car pools will reduce. Public transport operation. Public transport operation. A severe vehicle restriction measure may be introduced. There should be a great need for a public transport system with high quality and efficient service to satisfy the transport need of commuter without a car. Recognizing the importance of a good public transport system the government, however, should endeavor to provide a wide, a wide spectrum of integrated transport options that offer high-quality service, which are convenient, accessible, comfortable, safe, speedy, and affordable to the majority of the cities. These options include bus, the mass rapid transit, MRT, the light rail transit, and taxi service, which are currently operated by private companies in highly regulated environments. If all this we are mentioning can be introduced 
the transportation system in our developing countries, they will go a long way. They will improve our transportation system and there will be little of this problem we've mentioned earlier that we'll be facing. Another solution is planned public transport, like bus service. Planned public transport, like bus service. Improvement can be done in the bus service to enhance the attractiveness of traveling by bus. Bus lanes should be introduced to all major cities of developing countries to ensure that buses are protected from congestion effects on the road. Bus can be given exclusive use of the curb side lane along certain roads from the early hours of a day during the weekday like 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. and the rush hour of closing period of between the hours of 4 30 pm to 7 pm and on saturday weekend between 7 30 to 9 30 am and 11 30 to 2 am another scheme of enhancing reliability is introducing of dedicated traffic signal or b signal that will allow buses to be discharged from intersection ahead of other vehicles express bus service can be introduced to bring commuter from the housing estate to the CBD, Central Business District area, in a faster and more direct ways. They can develop it to travel on the expressway and have fewer stops, making the bus a comparatively attractive alternative to cars. Another solution could be mass transit system. Rain service can be deployed to cater for public transport demand. The Mass Rapid Transit, MRT, which can be used to serve every corridors of traffic. And the Light Rail Traffic, LRT, which can serve less capital intensive, is a more practical alternative for lighter corridors. Both will serve as the backbone of the country's public transport system, which is considered to be necessary to secure acceptance of traffic the strange mayor, the need for a mass transit system to cater for future demand was considered necessary since the year 1940 as the first transport. Please kindly check for your question of assessment. Thank you.